Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, the YouTube Nation, um, the subscribers on YouTube are ahead of me on this fight. Nurohiro Ishida versus Paul Williams. The fight will be on Showtime this weekend. I cannot tell you how many comments online as well as emails I've gotten asking me about this fight. People are excited because Ashida, of course, stopped James Kirkland in the first round, knocking him down three times, right? The fight was eventually stopped by Joe Cortez, experienced ref who had seen enough. Right, Paul Williams, of course, fought Erislandi Lara, and many people felt that he got a gift decision. Right, the CompuBox numbers showed that even though Lara threw far fewer punches than Williams, he actually outlanded Williams, who was getting hit cleanly with counters. So, of course, people are looking at this one, and they're even pointing out that Ishida is 6'1", Williams is supposed to be 6'1", I think he's taller, but he's listed at 6'1", Williams won't have his usual height advantage in this one, right? And so, many people believe that Ishida, whose people claim that he's being avoided by the big names, that Ishida will take this fight. They also want to know why Williams did not give Arislandi Lara a rematch. Well, let me just say that I think this fight's an optical illusion. I think Paul Williams wins this fight. And um, I know online, now keep in mind, my history with Williams is a little bit complicated. I told people online before the first Sergio Martinez-Williams fight, videos are still up, that they shouldn't bet on the fight, that I was on the sidelines because Martinez, then a huge underdog, was better than advertised. In the rematch, I took Sergio Martinez. For the Lara fight, I took Paul Williams. Then I made one of the more commented upon videos, for me at least, on YouTube, when after that fight I pointed out, that Williams was far more active than Lara. And even though HBO had Lara far ahead, people need to keep in mind volume and spacing in scoring a fight. Right? So I've been critical of Williams in the past. Uh, people have also seen me as a Williams supporter in the past. Um, let's just say I've been following Williams for a very long time. Let's talk about why he wins this fight. First, let's talk height, why I call it an optical illusion. Even though Ishida is six feet one inches tall, which is tall for a, you know, a middleweight or light middleweight, really, is where Ishida's fought most of his career. Understand that Ishida's reach is only 72 and a half inches. By contrast, Paul Williams has a reach almost 10 inches longer at 82 inches, right? The reaches aren't close. Williams, who stayed outside to beat Antonio Margarito years ago, conceivably could stay outside if he wanted to and would have a 5-inch reach advantage on each arm and trying to pepper Ishida from the outside. Understand, Williams is very different than James Kirkland. James Kirkland likes to come up on your chest. Kirkland doesn't have that long a reach. He's right in front of you. He's very hittable. Now, I know skilled counters like Martinez, like Lara, have been able to hit Williams flush. But Williams, in my opinion, is much harder to hit, much harder to counter than James Kirkland is. Keep in mind, Williams has fought guys like Winky Wright, very skilled 
counterpuncher, right? And Winky Wright had a hard time countering Williams, right? So I believe Williams's reach advantage is something you need to know about. Another thing is consider the guys who've given Williams a hard time. They're all very skilled boxers. But more importantly, most of them are southpaws. The guy who gave Williams his first loss, Carlos Quintana, he's a southpaw. Sergio Martinez, the guy who gave Williams his second loss, he's a southpaw. Erislandi Lara, the guy many people believe gave Williams his third loss, although the judges disagree. He's also a southpaw. Well, even though Ishida dropped James Kirkland, himself a southpaw, with a left hand, that first knockdown, right? Understand that Ishida is actually an orthodox fighter. His stance is an orthodox stance. It's not a southpaw stance like, let's say, Martinez and Lara. You can't look at the Martinez and Lara films and think that the angles of the punches will be the same angles. Not only that, you know, Williams took a beating from Lara, but yet wasn't knocked out in the fight, right? Williams, apart from the rematch with Sergio Martinez, has actually shown an ability to take a punch. I thought he got clipped with several magnificent shots in the first Martinez fight, but yet he stayed upright. Even the knockdown, right, uh, that took place was really more of a flash knockdown in that first fight, right? Well, understand Ishida, even though he dropped James Kirkland three times in one round, Ishida has a career KO percentage of less than 30%. He's not a hard hitter. Chances are he's not going to knock out Paul Williams. So he's going to be in the ring with the guy who throws higher volume and who has the better reach, right? And who has, between these two, the heavier punch. Williams really does have, when you think about it, all of the advantages. Let's talk about that Kirkland fight, too. Understand, I believe gamblers know this, when a fighter loses a lot of weight to make weight, it hurts their punch resistance. Younger guys like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., and Chavez Jr. is only something like 25 years old, are able to get away with this weight yo-yo routine in their mid-20s. But as you get older, right, especially when you're someone like James Kirkland, who has had to take a lot of time off from boxing. Kirkland has had to spend time in jail. Right. When when you get older and you're no longer always in the gym, you know, young, keeping that youthful advantage, when you get older and you have to lose a lot of weight to make weight for a fight, you know what? You're going to be in the ring thinking of a meal, seeing stars. You're not going to be able to take the punches that you normally take when you're 100 percent healthy. Just think about it in your own life. When would you be better able to take a punch, right? When you're in shape or when you've starved yourself to make weight and you're, you know, weight deprived, just getting carbs back into your body after the weigh-in. Now, James Kirkland himself admits that he was on the outs with his trainer at the time, right? And Wolf, he was with a different group, I believe Kenny Adams, and uh, he wasn't in the shape that Kirkland customarily is in, right? More importantly, too, if you look at the film of that fight, Kirkland is completely conscious after the third knockdown. Kirkland's complaint was that even though he was hit three times, you know, dropped three times, that the three were really bad footwork and slips, and that he was actually still ready to fight. 
Well, all I'm saying is this. Don't get me wrong. I thought the Kirkland fight, um, you know, Kirkland has little to complain about. But I will say this. If Mike Tyson were to knock you down three times in the first round, if Vitaly Klitschko knocks you down three times in the, in the first round, you'd be lucky to be able to speak, right? I mean, you, you probably wouldn't want any more, right? David Hay knocks you down three times in the first round. You're going to be in bad shape, right? James Kirkland wasn't in bad shape. That tells me that Ashida really doesn't have the kind of power that can stop a guy cold. I know we got a first round knockout in his last fight. That was against a fighter making his boxing debut. Ashida, 36 years old, right? He's an older fighter, just doesn't have the pop. He caught James Kirkland at the right time. Kirkland was rusty. Kirkland was out of shape. Kirkland was with new management. Not only that, let's question Ashita's chin. He fought Canelo's brother, Rigoberto Alvarez. Did you know that he was down on the canvas in that fight? That's a recent fight, 2010. Ashita was down on the canvas. So I have to question people who believe that this is really a competitive fight and that Paul Williams is finished, Paul Williams is shot, you know what, to me, Paul Williams certainly isn't who he was in his prime. I'll agree with that. But if you think about it, it could be that Paul Williams just has problems against elite technicians, counterpunching technicians who are southpaw, like Sergio Martinez, who's one of the best in the sport pound for pound, right? and Arislandi Lara, who, going into the fight, I believe, was unbeaten, right? I don't think we should extrapolate from that fight that Paul Williams is finished. I'm expecting Paul Williams to simply outwork Ashida. Quite frankly, I wouldn't even be surprised if Paul, Paul Williams doesn't get the stoppage. And keep in mind, Paul Williams has actually fought elite competition, people like Margarito, people like Winky Wright, people like Martinez, right? I believe he simply has fought a higher level of competition than Nurahiro Ishida. And I think it's going to show in this fight. I like Paul Williams here. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.